Okay, so someone DM'd me on Discord about rigging issues, so I wanted to make this video to show you guys how to rig something in Blender and export it into Roblox. The model I'll be rigging in this video will be this robot guy over here. I did a slight model revamp and wanted to rig him in Blender instead of Roblox because Roblox rigs are kind of fucking ass. You literally need a plugin to export the rig into Blender to have an easier time animating it. Not only that, Blender Rigs also allows you to use mesh deformation on a model and rig it in a way that is just not possible on Roblox without finding some really weird alternative. So we'll get started first by adding an armature with Shift A. I'll rename this to Rigs, but you can call it anything you want. Then you'd want to go to the data option and turn on in front and axes. These will be important later. Something I like to do is change the display as from octahedral to stick because it's just smaller and easier to see. We'll go into edit mode now and rename this bone to control bone. Now we can duplicate the control bone and start extruding the entire armature of this model, making sure to name each part properly along the way. So I'm at the point where I'm rigging the neck right now and I want to make it so I can align the neck bone to be perfectly on this hinge joint right here. So what I'm going to do is go into the model in edit mode. Hold alt and select the inner ring of the hinge joint. Click shift s and choose cursor to select it. Now, when I go back to editing the bone, I will select the neck bone I want to move onto that cursor point by clicking Shift S, select it to cursor. Make sure that the bone is disconnected from its parent when you do this, by the way. If you don't, the parent bone will get stretched out and it would look a little weird. Depending on which side you work on, while you're naming, make sure there's a left or right in front of the names of each bone that will be symmetrized to the other side. Alright, now we have one side of our rig made. Because we named the parts that should be mirrored with left, we can select everything by hitting A, right click, and symmetrize. Now the bones on the left are mirrored to the right side of the model as well. Do note that this symmetrization also works if you have dot .L or dot .R at the end of your bone names as well. Before we get to weight painting, I actually want to go into edit mode and separate the model into pieces. I wouldn't do this usually, but it helps in rigging something so rigid and stylized like this mech. Alright, now that everything is separated, we can start weight painting. Select everything in object mode by hitting A, and shift select the armature object. Click Ctrl P, and parent the objects to the bone with empty groups. Usually people start off with automatic as it gives you a good base for how your rig might deform. But in my opinion it's more annoying trying to edit automatic weight rather than just doing it yourself. Now shift select the bone, then the mesh you want to weight paint, then go into weight paint mode. First off though, I'm gonna go to the settings of the brush, go to advance, and turn off front face only. It will be annoying to dual fit for this model, so I'll turn it off for now. Go down to Fallout, and for Fallout Shape, choose Projected. Projected basically means instead of the brush being a spear with the radius at the tip of your mouse, it's a very very long cylinder. So basically it paints everything behind it no matter the size of the radius, and if that size is large enough to reach the other end of the mesh or not. So weight painting is a little hard to explain, but basically what is painted to a bone is what part of the mesh will be moved by that bone. So if we color everything red here on the head, and we rotate the head bone, you see that the head mesh moves when the head bone is painted onto it. If something as rigid as this mech, 
you can actually just apply the weight paint directly through vertex group but that's uh that's pretty fucking boring so i'll just go in and out and paint it manually like this you can swap between each bone by holding control and clicking the bone you want to use alrighty then weight painting montage Okay, so the model has been weight painted, everything is moving as I want it to, even if some of these makes like, uh, no sense. Just don't think about it too much. But first, I want to fix something. If I go back to the rig and move these thrust vectoring nozzles, yes, I just looked that up, they don't rotate at an ideal angle. To fix this, we have to rotate the bone's row. Go into edit mode of the bone and select the bone you want to change the row of. Click Ctrl R and rotate it to your desired angle. I want the nozzles to rotate on the X axis so I'll make sure the X axis is aligned almost parallel to the angle I want the nozzles to open at. I don't know how to align these bone rows perfectly so I just kind of eyeball them until it looks best. I saw some other bones was having some weird rows as well so I'll fix those up really quickly. Alright, now the model is basically done and ready to be exported, but before we export this model to Roblox, I do want to set up IK constraints in Blender because it will make it a lot easier to animate later. The IK constraints won't be imported to Roblox, but that's fine because this model will be animated in Blender. So to make an IK constraint, we'll go back into edit mode on the bone and extrude two bones on the feet and call them left leg IK and right leg IK. Make sure both bone are parented to the control bone but have no connection or deformation. Go back into pose mode and add an IK constraint to the leg bone above the foot. Set the target to the armature and the bone to the IK bone of each side. Change the chain length until it affects the entire leg or however much you desire. Now this already looks pretty good, but some of this guy's joints are moving in strange ways. To fix this, select the bone and go to the inverse kinematics option. Here you can lock specific axes so the bone can't twist and turn on them. Here we see that the X and Y axes of the leg bones are supposed to be moving because they are hinge joints. Lock those and we see that it moves a lot more naturally. Copy everything over to the other side, and you have a pretty nice IK constraint. However, there's one more thing we need to do. If we look at the feet as the IK constraint move, it seems to just do whatever it wants. We want the feet to lock to the ground when we move it, so to fix this, go back into edit mode, select the feet bones, and turn off inherit rotation. Looks a lot better now. Let's export this guy into Roblox and see how he looks. Export this model as an FBX with these settings. Alright, here we are in Roblox Studio with the fresh faceplate and everything. Let's see what this guy looks like when we export him in here. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's uh, scale this guy down now. Oh, 
cool. So I'll use a Roblox character to determine this guy's size. Actually, he's supposed to be. I think like that's a good size for him. Alrighty, here's the rig. So there is some issue with this rig at the moment. The main issue being that if you select under the model and you look at its scale, you see that this is a very low number. Save this for now. Okay, just save it somewhere. Put it in a notepad or something. Just save it because this number will be very important later when you're animating. When this model's scale gets too small, Roblox starts doing really weird things. So if you have a model that has a humanoid in it, it will just start sliding around all over the place. So we need to reset the scale to 1. Well, we can't. When it was at 1, it was literally the size of an entire mountain. So we're going to have to re-import this guy with this size number. So let's do that. Alright, so I recolored the old one red and the new one gray. If you select onto the head of the old one here, and you select the head of the gray one, you see that they're both the same size, which is very good. But the scale of the gray one is at 1, which will fix the sliding bug that Roblox has. The weird thing about exporting this size from Blender though is that it increases the size of the root part, which will cause the model to levitate a little in its base pose. But this isn't a really big issue, especially if you plan to use Humanoid with this model, because you can just mess around with the hip height until it looks good. That being said, this tutorial is over for now. Thank you everyone for watching. If you have any issues with this tutorial and think I made a mistake, feel free to comment about it and I'll check it out. If you guys want a tutorial on how to export Blender animations to Roblox, also feel free to comment about it. And as for this mech guy here, I have a lot of plans for him. I think I'm going to use Roblox materials for his textures though because the old version did as well. I think it's just going to be a little more fitting for him. I'll give him a nice pose until I have to use him again. Have a great day everyone. Hello everyone, Editor Kaiju here. So I forgot to mention in the video that to avoid that scaling number shenanigans, you can actually set up Blender's measurements to the setting on this dev post. I'll put the link to it in the description. Personally, I don't use it because you have to mess around with the camera afterwards to make sure that it doesn't clip with the new measurements because it's really, really small. And if you plan to export this model into any other engine, you probably have to change the measurements again or else it will be really small. Yeah, but that's about it. Have a great day, everyone.